Hi, and welcome back to this sample concerning uh, Windows Azure Storage. Uh, as you can remember from the first part of the sample, uh, we have already built a nice little sample application with which you can upload upload customer orders uh, in, in the form of text files. And we have a, a Windows Azure web role that uh, splits this text file into rows and columns and uses a good old plain old ADO.net to access SQL Azure, uh, call a store procedure and put these custom orders into, into a database. The next step is uh, to to split the uh, web role on the one hand, so the website that accepts file uploads from the working parts, the processing of the orders that should take place in in so-called worker role. So the first step that we have to do is we have to add a new role to our cloud project. That one's simple. We have to add a new worker role. Here we have the worker role, and we call this worker role. Um, Azure Storage dot Worker. Here we have the worker role. In fact, we will not do anything with this worker role for the moment. We'll just put it aside, and we have to move the business logic for processing. That means calling the store procedure from the web role to the worker role in a few minutes. But for now, we have to think of how the web role can pass the work uh, onto the worker role. And in, in Windows Azure, you have two storage techniques that uh, are perfectly sweet, suited for, for this purpose. The first one are Windows Azure queues. Queues is a good old first in, first out principle. Uh, you can add messages on the one side. On the other side, you can uh, get these messages out from, from the queue. But uh, Windows Azure queues have a few various handy features that make make them unique um, for passing work from a web role to a worker role, and you, you will see some of these features uh, during the demo in the next few minutes. The second thing is um, Windows Azure storage queues have not been built to transfer a lot of, of payload inside the message. So it is a good idea to just transport, for instance, a primary key, in our case, for instance, an order GUID through the message, and transfer the payload, uh, the large data for the customer order, in our case, uh, through another medium, for instance, SQL Azure, or even better suited, suited um, in Windows Azure table storage. Why don't we use SQL Azure for that? Well, SQL Azure uh, does not really scale very well for um, for our purposes because uh, at the at the moment SQL Azure just offers a single size of machine. You cannot uh, change between different sizes, and SQL Azure does not at all scale across machines. Table storage, on the other hand, does. Table storage has been built to to scale to, and to to be able to store terabytes and terabytes of data. You can partition your data, um, and SQL sorry Windows Azure will care for uh, scaling automatically. It will through a process of heavy load. It will process um, different partitions on different machines. So table storage is a great storage technique if you need. Uh, absolute performance uh, if you want to the automatic scaling behavior but on the other hand uh, we, Windows Azure table storage is is not your father is not a father's database you don't have SQL it's a classical no SQL database uh, under the hoods you access a table storage via rest interface you don't have this this uh, highly developed querying uh, facilities that you have in SQL Azure for instance so it the the store is not that intelligent as it is with SQL Azure so on the one hand you have great performance automatic scaling on the other hand uh, you don't have all the functionality that you have with SQL Azure so you have to choose it's also a question of price pay close attention to the price because in SQL Azure storage is quite expensive but transactions are free on the other hand with table storage storage is extremely cheap but you have to pay for every single transaction so you have to do the math of what's, what's right for you but in our case I want to demonstrate to you how you can use both queue and table storage 
to pass the work from the web role to the worker role. So let's go into our web role. Here we have the web role. Let's put the solution explorer away. And currently we directly call uh, our, our business logic here, so the store procedure inside our web role. We don't want to do that anymore. So I, I take this one here, uh, SQL Azure and so on, yeah, from here to here. Um, copy this one and put it into our newly created worker role. Let's go into the worker role here and add a new helper function. Let's call this one private uh, void process order. Uh, I'm not sure what to pass here for the moment, so don't pass anything and put this one in. We don't have this one anymore. Yep. Uh, let's call it. Let's write here to do add processing logic. Yeah, that that one's fine. We have SQL connection using is missing. Another using is missing. Um, yeah, that's it. We'll uh, put this process order meth method to the side for the moment. We will use it in a few minutes. Um, uh, one square bracket missing here and build succeeded. Yeah. So we can remove all this SQL Server stuff here because this will be done in our worker process. Uh, take this one, move it up two steps clean up a little bit and here exactly here to do send message via queue to access uh, Windows Azure queues we have to open a connection in a similar way that we have to open a connection to SQL Server uh, and for this let's create a small little helper class Let's call this class um, Cloud Storage Connection. It would just contain all the uh, the nice little helper functions that are necessary to. Oops, 